lots of different uh, takes. We've got lots of different age groups. Um, and I think that this is important because this shows us that it's doable for everybody and everyone's journey is going to look a little bit different. Uh, it sounds like uh, social media and, you know, the outside world can be a really big factor in things that teach us about alcohol. Um, but again, that journey is going to look different for you and you can make whatever you want of it. Um, and even consider talking with your children, talking with your friends, talking with people around you um, can maybe even help their journey as well. We're going to talk to Kara again, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about her kiddos because I think it's really helpful too to hear from a parent. Um, I know you have two kids, Kara. Um, I'd love to hear the experiences, not only sharing your sober curiosity journey with them, but about educating them in general about alcohol and societal pressures and how have you noticed or how, I'm sorry, how have you modeled those conversations for them? Yeah. So um, it's interesting because my kids have seen the spectrum. So they've seen me stop drinking out of choice. Uh, they've seen their dad stop drinking um out of a little bit more imperative choice that involved, um, you know, extensive treatment that was really supportive. And then they've had grandparents who never got treatment, um, who are living with very serious illnesses or have passed away because of addiction. And so the way that I talk about it is like, you're going to be curious. You are going to want to experiment. You are probably gonna wanna try it. And if you do try it, you might not like the taste, but you're probably going to like how it feels. And that mm. is totally normal. People do it and experiment because they like how it feels. The challenge is you don't know when or how much might flip the switch into addiction. Like that's that wild card that we don't know. So I want to normalize, like if you try it, like you try it if you're ever at a party or there's an unsafe situation yes i'm the parent that you call i come pick you up um and it's interesting because yeah like with the kids now alcohol is not as present it's some other substances that's more likely to do it but i just i want them to know that yeah you're probably gonna be you're probably gonna be curious and i'm here as a parent to support you so that hopefully those choices as a teen or an adult don't become irreversible with those consequences. Uh, and then my daughter jokes around. She's like, my personality is like crazy enough that I don't even. Do that. Uh, so we'll see how, how that, that plays out. Um, but I just, I just try to be open and they'll ask, they're like, Oh, is so-and-so sober? I'm like, yeah, they are like, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's very, very normalized. Good. Okay. So I heard two really important things normalizing and educating yeah good and educating them not only about alcohol the dangers of but also about their genetic propensity yeah and that's yeah. that's really important to talk about mm -hmm. family history with Absolutely. everything and then also recognizing that there's like family history in terms of genes but then yeah. there's family history in terms of lifestyle choices and patterns. And that's where we can have the most influence of being really mindful of, okay, what do I want to choose on purpose? And I say yeah. choose on purpose because oftentimes our choices are made by default based off of our peer group or our environment or just because it's a habit that we've seen others do. Mm -hmm. So we want to be really intentional about our reason why we're choosing it. And if you like your reason for choosing it, great. If you don't like your reason for choosing it, that's an opportunity to be curious. You know, I wonder if there are other possibilities here. Yeah, absolutely. It's about choice. And I like how you said choosing on purpose because, you know, like my daughter, you know, she did make choices until choices were then made for her because it tipped into addiction. Right? And then yes. you no longer make the choices anymore. Yeah. 
And I'm glad you said that because I would never want to minimize somebody like living with addiction or going through that mm -hmm. process of saying, oh, we'll just don't do it or just choose not to do it. That's not what it's about, but it's, a, you know, taking advantage of like when, when choice is still an option. Yes. Super important. Thank you, Kara. Gina, can you talk a little bit about the stigmas that people face when they're not drinking? How have you personally dealt with those socially? You know, speaking of purpose, I think, you know, drinking is a social activity for me. And for me, one of the main purposes is to connect deeper in conversation and quality time with other people. Um, but there is that stigma aspect. And I've definitely experienced some direct and indirect peer pressure from a variety of people to drink. So it's been kind of challenging to have some of those awkward conversations, especially when somebody is literally saying to your face, like, come on, you should join us or just have another drink. And, you know, it's, yeah. you get that kind of um, feedback a lot. And it's not just my friends or my housemates. It's in a lot of other social settings, I think, like even service staff at the restaurant or a bartender, they all make jokes and encourage you to have another one or to order a drink. And even in previous work, professional, and in my graduate school setting, alcohol was provided and even encouraged for our cohort to bond and socialize. And so it felt easier to just have a drink in my hand then to deal with those comments and questions, as you've mentioned before, of why, why aren't you drinking? Is something wrong? And it's really interesting how there's always a question if you don't have a cup in your hand. <laughs> um, and so I think this topic of social pressure and social stigma, it really boils down to me just not wanting to be perceived as boring or strange or just seen in any type of negative light. Um, I want to feel accepted and connected and included, like I think most other human beings do. Um, and so, you know, with this mindfulness and sober curiosity journey, I think a big positive impact has been my mindset about how I create social connection in my life. And I can absolutely engage in deep conversations and f be fun and participate in different activities without alcohol like it's not the alcohol that makes me fun i make me fun <laughs> yes <laughs> and so how do you answer some of those questions when people are still asking you like oh but aren't you gonna drink but aren't you just gonna have one <laughs> i yeah I, I try to be really honest of like yeah you know i kind of do want one but i had a talk with myself and i realized i have something i want to get to tomorrow morning i have you know maybe brunch with my family and my nephew and i don't want to feel groggy for it and i also want to make sure that i can get home safely at the end of the night my sleep has become so important to me um over time sleep is everything for me and so i just be honest and i say i want a good night's sleep i want to have energy for tomorrow morning and this is just what i've decided and you know their response to me clarifying that boundary is also really telling of my connection with that person mm -hmm. you know it says a lot about that person if they don't like my response and if they want to take that personally because this is my personal choice it's my body and it's my night and it's my day and it's really interesting if somebody decides to take what I've said in a negative light or if they accept it and say cool we'll keep moving on and yeah mm -hmm. that has been also a huge lesson for me in terms of who I'm friends with and who I want to spend time with yeah I think that's that b word again right boundaries and boundaries are you know people's reaction to boundaries are a them problem that's not a you problem right exactly. you get to have your boundaries and how they react to it that's a them problem Michael and Cheryl, I'd love to hear more about the positive effects. You mentioned physical, mental, financial um, that you've experienced ever since you became sober curious. You know, we were spending a ton of money on alcohol. We really were because mm. our tastes went to the high yeah, end. Really cool. You know, I we like the really good quality um, spirits and those things are pricey and you get on a routine where you're you're doing it all the time. That's a huge chunk of your budget. And we didn't even realize how much we were spending on that sort of thing. So that was one thing. And then the other one was sweets. 
um, when we would drink, we would crave other things, chips and sweets. And, you know, you'd, and it was a, a compulsion almost. You had to have it. It wasn't a choice. It was, you were out of control. And for you, it was ice cream. For me, it was chips. And we would just binge on those things. And so your, you know, your waistline takes a hit, your, your, your health takes a hit. It's just not, it's, it was, it's much healthier not to have that impact. I was so totally surprised when I wouldn't have to have dessert after dinner. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> I, you know, so that is absolutely true. The yeah. sweets thing is a, the sleep thing is sleep a is big, huge. Big, sleep big, is the biggest. Us. Yeah, it really is. Get older. It's a little harder to sleep. So. I'd, yeah. I'd go to sleep, you know, like that, and then wake up in the middle of the night and be awake for three, literally three hours, could not get back to sleep. And that that's horrendous. You know, that just, you can't function well when that's your sleep pattern. It just doesn't work. So now it's not an issue and driving's not an issue. We don't have to worry about, you know, overindulging and driving have home. have a designated driver. Right. So it really makes a difference in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much. Kira and Gina and Michael and Cheryl, I can't thank you enough for being here today and just for being so willing to speak candidly and transparently about your experiences and, and giving us your thoughts and your insights. Um, I want to be clear, too, that this is not just about um, quitting drinking, that this is about being sober curious, right? And, and again, that that looks different for everybody. It may not mean that you have to give up alcohol, right? And I think that um, we've had quite the spectrum um, in conversations today. And, and I think despite, you know, what we see out in our world or in social media, I think we've all mentioned noticing that drinking really has become less popular um, and folks are becoming much more creative around you know, things like how do we have events? How do we have, you know, fun? Or how do we create varieties of drinks that people still want to come out and drink? Um, yeah. So I think that that's going to create more of a conversation around alcohol and, and start to normalize conversations like this. So that makes me feel really good about, you know, looking at where we are at in society with alcohol. And I hope that it helps you too to feel better about being able to have that conversations with the folks in your world. So what now? Um, from this coach, a couple of other coaches uh, that you heard from today, to you, uh, if you want to begin processing your thoughts around this, uh, I think Gina even mentioned taking some time to journal when you've had an experience with alcohol. How did it feel in your body? How does your mind feel? What symptoms did you experience? What things did you like? Did you not like, you know, do a pros cons list maybe. Are there benefits when you don't drink? I think we've all talked about having better sleep. Maybe there's less headaches. Maybe you have less anxiety. Um, and are there other things that you can do for your anxiety? You know, be really curious about yourself and, um, and how this particular fluid, I think Michael said, um, affects you. And to those watching, I hope that the stories that you heard today helped you to gain a little bit more insight into sober curiosity. Thank you.